using computer instead of our brains. So let's say there's a number two here, right? So when we humans see this, this is a two, we can make sure. But when you fit it into a computer, how would it know that it's actually a two or it's not a three or four or five? So it goes through this thing called CNN, which is convolutional neural network. It's like multiple, uh, multiple filters, like small filters for every pixels or 10 pixels. It will look at the color, determine if it's a one or zero, and then you will go through multiple layers. And until the end, it will flatten and will return a result for whatever you want to decide. Like for this case, it's zero, one, two, until nine, right? And then for next example, let's look at the human face. So the first layer of the CNN, it will detect the edges of the face so that you can see the, 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 the edge of the face, the eyes, the, the mouth, and so on and so forth. And then the, in the next layer, it will detect more deeper or bigger shapes of the face. For example, we can detect the eyes, the, the full eyes, the full mouth, the full nose, and then continue moving on. Finally, we can detect the overall face of the human. And then you will return our result, right? Uh, so that's a short theory. So anybody got any question? If not, then we can move on to our training part. All right, I'm going to close the theory tab now. And uh, for, for this tutorial, I'm going to use this GitHub thing and here. And uh, before we start, let's talk about how we prepare data. So the most important thing in training a model, right, is the data. You need to tell the machine that whether, like, for example, this, this person, today we're going to do about whether the person is wearing mask or uh, not wearing mask or wearing the mask incorrectly, right? So the machine need to know that this image, we give them whether this is correct or not. So this is uh, not wearing mask, right? Like yesterday, Han Ching said, this is a uh, supervised learning in uh, CNN. So normally when we get image, we get a data set from the internet, it's not processed like how we wanted it to like feed straight into, feed into the uh, training part. So there's a specific like input shape of the image that we, to, we need to follow. And uh, there's a specific type of format that we need to follow. So for example, this image that I get from the web is 1024 and 1024 pixels uh, square, right? So the image is very large. If you want to train this image on like 1000 times 1000 pixels, it will take a long, long time and a, a lot of computational resources. So what we can do here, uh, we're gonna we're gonna resize the image to 224 and uh, some of the thing, some of the image here are not like cropped to the face and so on. Uh. So for example, this image. This image has a uh, multiple person, either they are wearing masks or they are not wearing masks. And they given us this XML file, which specify the image file the size of the image, the, the whether they are wearing masks or not, and the the coordinates, uh, the boxes of the human face lab. So you can see here, without mask, so I presume it's this guy here. So you will crop out the face, and uh, you can see this train. It, yeah, this guy. So. This guy. So when you are processing these images, right, there's no really like um, like a specific uh, app like you can do to crop the image. You actually need to learn like uh, either this in this case is a XML file. You need to extract extract the data from this uh, XML file, and then you need to use the computer vision to crop the image. 
this one pop the image um, pop the image lah. so this kind of thing like even if i if i talk about it this is quite boring this kind of thing you need to learn yourself so that you can remember and you know you can you can actually remember lah. and then moving on so i already done the I already done the pre-processing for you all. Some of the data set online, they actually pre-process for you, which is nice, but, but those problems have already been solved, right? So we will try to solve that different problems that other people haven't solved yet. So you need to pre-process your own data next time. So in this case, we have tests, we have train. One is, is to train, one is to test whether the machine um, learn or not during our training process. So as you can see, all these images are opted to the face with a size of 224, 224, 224 and uh, RGB format, I think. Right, let's move on. 10 minutes in. What was this? All right, so here, uh, just a quick question, is anybody going to be training with me if not then i will just quickly go through but if you guys have any questions uh you can just ask lah. Uh, hello all right so just gonna train in case you wanna so we're gonna go to this link which is the pre-process file that i uploaded and then when you open this you can straight away go to here share with me and then make a copy here so that it will be inside your drive drive which is here and now we have the google collab which i prepared uh, yesterday i think all right uh first of all copy to drive so you can oh can we add bounding box in video format um technically video is just um, a sequence of images right so if you want to add bounding box in video format you can actually so because each frame you just need to determine where the human is so so yeah um, can you elaborate on the question as in like you want the you want the bounding box to be in the video or you want to extract the bounding box of each frame uh, yeah inside the video so means that you want to draw the bounding box is it Oh, that one uh, later, if we have time, I have a uh, hands-on later we can see. Actually, there's a lot of uh, library that can detect like humans' faces and uh, uh, water bottles and whatnot. So they will give you a they will give you a coordinate, right? So you just you if you want to extract the you want you want to extract the the box, you just need to crop it out, or you can just draw the box around the face right okay let's continue with training our model so in this case um we'll be using google collab so connect And uh, before we start training, you want to make sure that it is actually using GPU so that you can train faster. All right, let's start first line of code. Actually, mm, most of these codes, right, you don't need to memorize because to be honest, I also don't memorize like half of this. I mean, if there's a template that you can follow, why, mem why memorize it yourself, right? It's not like before the pre-processing data, you need to actually like, think or not. This uh, model training, you just need to fine tune some uh, parameters such as the batch sizes, the image size, the learning rate, and the uh, other things. Lah. So 
in this case, we're going to connect to our Google Drive so we can access the database data set. Possible, just like how. Yeah, thank you, Jovin. Just like same, same as the how your iPhone and your Samsung camera can draw boxes around your face. It's actually quite easy. All right, next, we're going to... Okay, so now you can see your Google Drive is already imported here. So you can go My Drive and you can see your data set here. Okay. Now we're going to load the file and unzip it into and extract it to our working space here. All right, done. Press test train with the data sets. Check. All right, everything is looking good. Now we're gonna import some of the libraries that we're gonna use. Mainly is uh, NumPy, TensorFlow. Yeah, these two. So TensorFlow is a uh, tools that we can use to train our model. Other there's a uh, PyChart, and yesterday Han Jin said there's a uh, MATLAB you can train with, and uh, there's a lot of things you can train with today. So for now, we're going to use TensorFlow. If you guys want to move on, like you want to learn other platform, it's fine. You can learn PyTorch and whatnot. All right. So now we're going to define the path to our text, test, and train uh, data set. We define the batch size and the image size. And uh, we fit it into this train data set variable which define whether it's shuffle or not with the batch size and the image size. This is the validation data set. It's the same thing. And next, this one is uh, just to show you all like some of the examples of our data set. So this is massware incorrectly because it's at the chin. This is incorrectly because at the nose. With mask covered everything. Some of the data set is uh, quite blurry because uh, you know just now I showed you it's extracted from the background. And uh, if you want a clearer results, right, I recommend you all to uh, find some better data set because this one, I think, has some resolution problems. Right. So next, we're going to separate the test data set into validation and test so we can use later. And this is auto-tune, prefetch the data so that the so that when we finish training one batch, the next batch of data can come faster. All right, now we're going to define number of classes, which is three, one, two, three, with masses, without masses, and mass were incorrectly. And for this model, we're going to use CNN model, which is consists of convolutional network and max, mostly convolutional 2D and max polling 2D. So we have 16, 32, 64, 8. I mean, this one, there's no, there's no guideline that you have to follow. You can just put in as many as you want. But yeah. So this is uh, pre-processing. Yesterday, Han Ching said pre-processing, rescaling. So every images, they have like uh, um, every color and every pixel, right? There's two to five, two to five, uh, two to five. That's zero to two to five. There's a range of value that it can be. So in this case, we're going to rescale it to 1 over 2 to 5. So it's 0 .0, 0 0.0 to 0 0.1. So next, we're going to prediction layer. Dense 3 is the number of output activation. We're going to use soft max because it's either you are wearing a mask or you are not wearing a mask. So either you are wearing mask or you are wearing the mask incorrectly. So there's no gray area between these three unless with, uh, with mask and mask wear incorrectly. So if you want, you can actually change this to sigmoid, which we will return to you the probability of each, um, each, what is it called? Each classes. So let's say, for example, if you put the sigmoid, this one will be point, point 0.8, this one will be point, point 0.5 because wearing mask, this one will be point 0.1 because they are not wearing mask. So in this case, we're going to use softmax, which will all of these trees probability add up will be equal to one. 
so far, nothing, no question. And uh, this one is just uh, adding up the model input, which is input size, this one, 224 to 224, add it to the top. And output prediction layer, add it to the bottom of this uh, model, this uh, neural network. Now we're going to define the base learning rate, which is 0 0.001. This one you can uh, simply put any numbers you want. Normally I put 0 0.001 or 0 0.001. 1 or 0 0.0001 or 1 more 0 and such. For this optimizer, we're going to use Adam, which is the most widely used one. And then we're going to use sparse, uh, this loss function here, sparse categorical cross entropy with from logic equal force. Uh, this one is used for multiple, um, multiple outputs that you want and uh, using softmax or sigmoid. All right, moving on. Let's look at the model summary. You can see here we have input layer, which is, this is our input image size, two to four, two to four by three. Three is the RGB, two to four is the, two to four is the height, this is the width. This one, none is, none is depending on the batch size. So if you want to train 128, you put in, you actually put in for you. So this one, 128, your result return 128 and 3 for each of the classes. Understand, right? Uh, if it's too fast, you can just tell me. So we can here see, we can we need to train 4 million parameters. This one I did train before, right? We can just train again. So normally the training time is depending on the trainable parameters here and the number of number of images that you provide so in this case we provided about uh, 10,000 images lah, for three class which is uh, quite little actually compared to other models out there you know um, using Google they all they use like millions or so so let's not expect this model to perform that well uh, because there's only 10,000 images and we are tr only training on three epochs. So epochs is uh, how many times you want the model to train. It's like um, how many days you want to study before your test. Uh. So right now we can see the accuracy for the training is 0.38 and the validation accuracy for our test data is 0.95. This is quite high. Um, normally, if you train like other data sets, right, it won't be so high so quickly. So maybe this um, problem is too easy or something, or maybe the data set is a bit polluted. So it's alright. We will see later after after we finish. Finish trading. See, uh, is that easy actually? Just train your own model. All right, now we're gonna test our model. So here I've got three pictures of three pictures. I just drag it in, paste it in, paste it in the working space. So you can see, not wearing this guy is not wearing a mask. This guy is wearing a mask. I mean, this this girl. This guy is wearing wrongly, as it's uh, at the chin without the nose. All right. So after you train the model, right? Uh, this is the important part. This, this part. So results equals the model, which is this model that we trained earlier, and the input is the image that we're going to input. So pre this, these lines of code is just uh, pre-processing the image, like. Uh, before we train the model, right, we need to pre-process the image. We need to ensure that the image we pass into the model is same as the image that same format has been passed into here, right? Which is a uh, 224 by 224. 
So when we using TensorFlow, normally it is trained in RGB. So when we use CV2 to import the image, it will come in VGR. So here we will change the VGR to RGB and resize the image. This one is, we add in the list so that no, now the image size is 224 by 224 by 224 by 3, right? So just now we can see here the, the model summary here. We can see the, uh, the input shape is non 224, 224 by 3. So we are missing this none, right? So if we if we run, if we straight away run this, you will return an error and say that the the input layer shape is incompatible with what we offer just now. So now we just need to add in a one one into the image. So you can see here the screen shape. Is a numpy array, so you can use shape. You're gonna return one two two four two two four by three. So if you are return one, so you can see here the output is gonna return one. So this is precisely. So this is one. Uh, actually, let's print result. So you can see the result. You can see it returns a tensor with a point. This is the for. This is probability for the first class second class and third class with a shape of 1, 3 and float 32. So what's the first class? Let's look at first class is a uh, mass wear incorrectly, which is probably given is 0.327. With mass is 0.281. Without mass is 0.391. Now we given this image, which is wrongly, which is where wrongly. So we should assume that you will actually go to the first class or I mean, should be 90 something here but the model is quite shallow and uh, it's just a couple of layers of convolutional network so we cannot assume that it can uh, perform that well i mean if you want to if you want to if you want to uh, increase the performance like the accuracy of this model you need to add in like, multiple layers and more dropouts and such i mean there's a lot of things you can add in like um into this thing here so, you see layers there is so many type of layers that you can use this yeah you get what i mean now. so so this is like a uh, build your own lego thing now. You continue, if you see the this one is output is not good, so you just tune the epoch, the base learning rate, the, the model layers, you can tune, you can change your data set to, I mean, bigger or smaller. So actually it's kind of like your DIY kind of thing in training your own model. So now we're going to save our model. All right now you can see our model is safe in our drive yes. there we go this model is saved in a h5 format which is the default format for tensorflow models or you can save in folder type which includes all the checkpoints and weights uh, in case Later on, you want to you want to convert the model to like not H five format. You want to convert to Onyx format or uh, Python. I mean PyTorch format. You can do that. All right. So as you can see here, this self built layer is performing quite badly, right? So now I'm gonna I'm gonna show you the transfer learning. Transfer learning is, is like you see someone build a Lego, right? And their Lego is a uh, Star Wars, um, the spaceship is very beautiful, very big. And your model by comparison is just a, a stick man, right? 
so actually one thing you can do is you can you can borrow their how would say like manual to build your own lego set right so here are some available models that you can borrow there is quite a lot of models so one thing we're going to look at is inference time step which is uh, how many what's the time needed for each prediction because we're going to deploy it on our gpu or cpu you want it to run as fast as possible if not like each frame like each person you want to detect it will run like let's say 20 milliseconds or 60 milliseconds or even this like, 1000 millisecond it's not it's not um it's not good you run it you want it to run as as close to real time as possible so in this case i mean you guys can choose whatever model that you want in this case i've chosen resnet 50 v2 which is version two, version 2 if you guys want to know about all this model they all use like different type of um technique to train their in their layers right for example resnet they that is called residual network they i believe they have some uh, uh weights right from previous layers like they can connect it to the next next layer mm, instead of the next layer so that the the next next layer can learn from the first layer and the second layer so normally the the linear layers right we talk about is just one to two and three and four so two always learn from one three is learn from two so resnet can learn from number three can learn from two and one um in, if this is too confusing uh i'm sorry about it huh? uh, all right let's move on to transfer learning all right same thing let's copy the drive okay connect uh too many sessions for good collab you can only connect one session one session per account so we need to terminate this this now the session that we create our model with or you can you know just log into another google account and train on both accounts so same thing here we're going to import our google drive which have the data set you want allow uh so far no questions All right same thing unzip import define the train validation train validation show you the images well, actually this is moving quite fast huh? and uh, it, uh, it, uh, it 30 something All right you see this mask this one is quite blurry um actually you can take off this data set you can see that it's not gonna help much for this uh, training so next time uh, make sure your data set is clean uh. same thing define separate prefetch preprocess ah here's the good part so just now we use now we're going to use resnet right so we're going to pre-process with the resnet so now you can see applications this is the same as uh, this so let's say i don't want to use resnet anymore i want to use uh, mobile net mobile net so i just go to mobile net i just copy pre-process input function copy and you know just change this resnet to mobile net if you want to use mobile net uh 
why is it different? Some of it use the image to be 0 to 1, which is point something something. Some of it use negative 1 to 1. It really depends on the different type of what, what kind of a model you want to borrow from. All right, so as we put it into our model, right? All right. As we put it into the model, right? Uh, we just like, we, like uh, try to lighten. Let me go back to the example just now. Right. When I put in the model, right? See, we put in the image, right? We don't need to actually go through the two to five thing. Where is it now? Two to five. This rescaling. Because it's inside the model. Right? So you can just like put it in and not to worry about it. All right. So now preprocess input for ResNet and uh, declare the image size, the image shape. This tree is the RGB value uh, after the 224 by 224. So image shape is image size, include top false. Oh, I just closed the example just now. So what is the include top? Top is your your input layer. So previously, ResNet 50 is trained on ImageNet, right? But the ImageNet input is different from our, in this case, our model input. So we need to remove the top and replace it with our own input shape. All right, the weights we're gonna take from ImageNet, ImageNet because we are using CNN. And uh, moving on, image batch, label batch. This one is feature batch. This one is to later, later we need to define the global, global, global average layer. So previously we use uh, flatten, right? So now we need to use, now we use uh, global, global average layer, which is uh, more fancier. Uh, first, now we make sure the First, we make the model, the ResNet model, not trainable first. And later on, we will train it. Then, three output, same uh, same output, three output, soft max, same as previous one. And uh, this is the prediction batch. This is your batch size, and this is your prediction output. All right. Input layer defined, preprocess defined, base model is ResNet, over average layer is like flatten, output is the our prediction layer, which is tree dense, softmax, model, input, 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 inputs, output, outputs, base learning rate, same as previous, add them, sparse, same as previous. All right, now. Let's take a look at the model summary. So now you can see that at first, the ResNet 50 has 23 million parameters. Previously, we have uh, just 4 million. So what this means is that the ResNet is deeper compared to our, our self-made uh, DIY stickman model just now. So it can detect more, detect more like um shapes and uh what's it called shapes and different shapes and uh, uh edges and and things like that so for now we are only training our dense layer tree because we define it as not trainable just now so we only got six thousand parameters to train for this right we're going to train it using two epochs so now we use three now we're going to use two validation go validation data set for epoch train using train data set um if you guys don't understand these terms right you can go to here actually we will guide you 
things like stuff like that. You can read it up on different, like fit, for example, fit, what is fit? Change the model for a fixed number of epochs and uh, the inputs x non, y non, what is x? x is uh, training data set, right? y is what, batch size is what. So if you don't understand, the easiest way is to, is to just look up the documentary, the documentation, right? Uh, let's see. So, so because this layer, has, this model is much deeper, so I think it will train longer lah, compared to our previous model, even though it only has like 6,000 parameters to train. Okay, here you can see the accuracy is, the training accuracy is 0.55, but the validation accuracy is 0.8 lah. Uh, normally, this wouldn't be so big of a difference. Normally, this one would be 0.55 and this one would be 0.3 something. Maybe this problem is too easy. Something. All right. I already tested the model yesterday, so it seems like it would work fine for this, but not this model. This one I trained for for quite a long time, still haven't get the acceptable results. But for this transfer learning, I would say it take considerably less time as compared to previous. So, all right, you just finish up training two epochs. Right, this is 0 0.89 and 0 0.92. Uh, normally, if you see this, it's either overfitted or something is terribly wrong with the model. But in this case, it's all right. Same thing, we're going to import our images. To test our model okay, wrongly, we got wrongly. Now we're gonna test wrongly. This guy is wearing the mask wrongly. Gonna run. This is the pre process just now. I did say wrongly. Wrongly is first one, so 0.45 with mask is 0 0.50. So even though the validation accuracy is uh, quite high. As you can see now, the actual model is not that accurate. It's all right. We will move on to fine tune our model. What is uh, fine tuning? Fine tuning is just now is not trainable, right? This two million parameters. Now we're gonna unlock this uh, twenty three million parameters. Sorry, and uh, we're gonna train it, train on it, so that you can learn. More. Just now we just train on the dense layer. So now we're gonna for layer in base base model layer fine tune at one fifty. So one fifty onwards we're gonna so total number of layers one ninety. We're gonna fine tune from one fifty onwards. And we just compile the model. And uh, one thing to note here is the the learning rate for fine tuning needs to be uh, less than the transfer learning because you send you unlock so many parameters at once at the the model is going to bounce around quite a bit if you if your learning rate is too high so now we got this learning rate divided by five and originally we have uh, 0 0.0001 so now it's 0 0.0005 all right so 150 layers onward we need to train about 15 million parameters, which is uh, normal standard. So we're going to train on, this is actually two epochs. Zero, something wrong with this kind of code. So this is actually two. So if I'm one, can just put zero. It's two. That's not we're training on two. So you can see this accuracy is 95 because it actually inherited the model from previously just now. So it's the same model. 
the model, we just unlock the parameters. So now we can move these parameters, these 15 million parameters. And it here is estimated time, so about one minute. Uh, in this one minute, anybody on, got any questions they would like to ask? Any question at all? So we can pass the time. Any questions? Uh, this might seem like if you never look into this before, it might overwhelm you. But it's actually just follow the format. You just if you didn't get the results that you want, you just go back and fine tune a little bit and uh, train the model again and check if you get the results that you want. So uh, declaring your own model is easy lah, as you can see. Just normally I just borrow from borrow from ResNet or MobileNet. Uh, I rarely create my own models nowadays because most of the time it's too shallow lah, the model layers and now uh, the output is not quite acceptable. I mean if someone else has the answer, just copy it, right? I mean, not copy, like reference it, right? In uh, the, your assignment and stuff. All right, now the training accuracy reached 97.61. Previously it was 9. What does this mean, actually? Training accuracy means that the uh, second, this training accuracy, like the, the machine can differentiate all of this image, like 128 batch, lah. so 128 of uh, this image shuffle, like for example, this one. I mean, this image is too blurry. Even humans see, you can see the nose here, maybe. So I'm going to predict this one is incorrectly. All right, the validation accuracy. So the validation, which is the test data set, is not given to train with the model. So, for example, pick one more HD of it. This one, right? This one, this image is not given to train. So after each epoch, it will train. After it train finish, it will compare it to the test data set which is given. Uh, I think it's 128, 128 batch, and we will see, or, or 128 or, or lah, either one. You will see whether the model, how the model, uh, how the model, how the model predict it lah. So in this case, it predict to be 98% accurate for the test data set. Right? Okay, now this is the same thing. We're going to test it on the three images that we imported just now, which is not wearing, wearing, and wearing wrongly. Same, we pre-process the image. In this case, return the prediction. For this one, let's just... Now it's wearing wrongly. Image read wrongly. RGB. Four. Batch size is one. So let's run this. It should return us wrongly. Oh, for print. So print. Wrongly is which one? Wrongly is first one, right? So nine ten to the power negative one, which is zero point nine nine three five. So wrongly is correct. Now let's try wearing. This is this bearing. Bearing the second one is yeah, correct. Wrongly. 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 Wrongly is the first one. Eh, just now. Just now not wearing is which one? Oh last one. So this is the some logic it will return the maximum maximum value which is this one 0 
and you will index it to the class which is wrongly first I didn't define the class class is here all right this is zero this is one this is two all right so it will return this argument max will return index will return one two so you return two right and two. And then now predicted passes. Passes a list, so we can call out the element by a bracket. And next is the int. So classes two, which is zero one two, will return us not wearing. So this two combining together with this is some uh, syntax. This is for the first one predicted. This curly bracket is for the second one. Second one round NP max i. This is basically the percentage of the the output that we predicted. So uh, NP max is the we return us ninety nine point something times a hundred will give us ninety nine point three, and then we round it up to. 99.32 for example so we print this string to print and not wearing 99.99 percent which is uh quite accurate let's try the other one right. right. 99.95 percent you can save your model here to your google drive or you can save save drive and just save to working space here. But if you save to the working space, it will when you close it, it will just uh, disappear. Lah. So if you want to download, you just click download and uh, download to your computer. All right. So that's all for how to train your model. Quite simple. I will say. Any questions from anybody? All right, no questions. Um, if you want to move on to the hands on on the webcam part. You need to download the model to your PC lah. Or if you didn't train, you can download it to from here. Uh, this is self built. This is ResNet. This is the model. H5 file. If you want to do your own mask detection later, you can download the model now. All right. So, no questions. Let's we'll move on to our demonstration part. All right. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna create a new project. Let's call this real time. So if you have Conda, you use Conda. If you don't have Conda, you just use your computer's Python interpreter. So in this case, I'm going to create a new virtual environment using Conda, using Python 2.9 is the same thing. Create new window. All right. Here we go. Loading. All right, so you open up the terminal. Go down here, copy this, pip install. We're going to use TensorFlow, we're going to use MediaPy, we're going to use NumPy, we're going to use OpenCV. All right, let's go. Which one was it? This one. Terminal, paste it down to your terminal, pip install, and it will install the 
prerequisite library for you. We just stands for with the pipe and non pipe and opens in. Okay. TensorFlow is the library to train the model, and the media pipe is the one we need to use to find the face. Uh, OpenCV also have one uh, cascade, something harsh, something face detection, but it doesn't support the face when it's uh, wearing a mask. But in this case, uh, this case, sorry, it's done. In this case, we, since we are detecting human faces in the mask, we do not use media pipe as the speed is almost the same and the accuracy is almost the same as well. But you need to learn, not learn, but like, you need to look up another library. Okay, now create a Python file read. All right, so if you have your model just now installed here, this is it. I'm gonna copy it and paste it here. Okay, I have uh, this is the our own model, this is the ResNet model. So now I'm gonna show you guys how to how to load your model, right? Okay. Before that, I'm gonna put in the three pictures again. You can see here three pictures. Actor, and I can see the three pictures. Three guy. All right. So model equals to TF across. Model. Model. If I remember correctly, let me check. If this is wrong, copy. This is the path. Oh no. I think it's the model. Let me check. Uh, correct, just now. Right. So just copy path or the path. Absolute path. Control Shift C. So next I'm going to use Control Shift C. Put in R, stands for raw string. Put in the path. We have your model, which I can print model and the model. All right, see, there's a model summary. But the This is the model that we train. It's now 23 million parameters. Yeah, correct. Everything's correct. So now let's say you want the same thing, right? Be it from here. Image relay, not this one. This one. This is, oh, we're gonna input CV2 and E as well. This one. This one. Up, friends, 
Pico image read the image. In this now the the path is wrong because there's no content here. It's just wrongly dot png cvt color bridge to rgb resize match size equals to one model print result. This is a string, so I just run. And it should return us the same result as just now in Google Colab. Where wrongly? What will you fit into wrongly? So it's correct. So now you want to test, like in this case, our our own model. This one is this one. Let's see the accuracy. Just now we look at it, it's not that accurate. So Running wrongly, seventy percent. Okay, accurate. Let's try wearing. Wearing. Oh, never mind. The model is not accurate. Okay, let's now you learn how to deploy the model, which is by this function load model. And to predict the output of the model, just model thought model bracket image, or you can put qubit. Same thing. Prefer model bracket image. Okay. Now let's move on to how to open webcam.py so as i said earlier right this workshop i mean this today we're going to learn about um real-time mass varying detection right so to do real-time you need some real-time data and to do that the best way is to use your webcam or you can import a video anything so Import our library or CV2 import numpy. All right, so pen equals to CV2 video capture. This is your camera ID zero. How many cameras you have? If you have zero cameras, then you zero. I mean, if you have one camera, then zero. If you have two cameras, but you want to use the second one, then it's one. Right. So, since this is a video, right. When we run this, this actually a print equals to 10 read. I want to read the frame, so now let's see. If you want to show the image CV2, we will show Windows name, whatever frame. This is the frame. This is uh. This is, uh, we don't need it, but the bottom can show whatever frame, it will show us the frame right now of my cam, right? Supposedly, but if you run this, it will show, it actually show a bit on my uh, second monitor just now, and then it will close. This is because we want it to con consistently feed into it. So to do this, we need a loop. So while true, initial. So now down here we need to write uh, this part. I always don't remember. Let me just copy here. This one. If CV two wait key one, uh, this is if we press the escape key, it will close the. The stream, the, the 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 webcam, the images. So I'm gonna run this. You can see here. You can see my face here. Run it. All right. And close it using escape. So now we have frame. Right. So the next thing to do is import our model. Right. So just import. Import. Tensorflow, STF, 
Huggle equals TF dot class. Huggles float model R. Want to load the rest network. Right. Our model, we load it. Now, frame given. This is how we use it to predict the image, right? Which is this. So now the cam the frame is same as after this part. So it's after here. Right here. This is our frame. This is frame. frame. So now we need to pre-process it. Alright. So first is CV2 come in import as BGR, but our model requires RGB. So frame equals frame eight. No. CV2, CVT color, frame to change the frame. Next one is what you want to change the frame to. So CV2 color RGB. It all correct is quite useful here. And we resize the frame. Frame. Actually, frame equals CV2 resize frame. You want to resize equals to 224, 224. Right? So we're going to check it out now. See the image is a uh, different color, is in VGR. It's in RGB now, but the uh, we to use it at, as a BGR. So what we can do here is this we just frame some just CV2 CVT color frame CV2 RGB. So capital. You want to change it back to BGR. So now everything should be fine. To be back to the color that we wanted to show that like, this is the real life, con uh, real life color and one more thing to add is now the frame is actually not like a mirror if you want to make it like a mirror cv2 flip and same thing the first thing is the frame that you want to change flip. uh i think it's one I remember correctly, let me try. Yeah, so now flip from, uh, it's like looking now, now it's looking at, now it's into a mirror. So if you guys notice something, right, these images have people crop to their faces. However, when you're doing webcam demonstration, right, running the game, the the images is straight from the webcam so if you want to predict it you need to go real close to the webcam right so either you can do that or you can implement uh, another model that can help you to crop the face into the webcam all right so let's create a new file yeah hi uh, face detector. Right. So same thing. We're gonna we're gonna import media pipe as MP. So now I don't remember what media pipes um code is. I'm gonna want media pipe. So what we are oh. So you can see media pipe has a lot of uh, different APIs. Uh, tomorrow, Alex will talk about it. So now we're just going to skip through face detection. Let's look at the code. All right. Now, let's copy this. I mean, there's a web coming to here, but we're not going to do that. Media pipe. Right. Face detection. Reference face. See with media pipe face detection, model selection, blah blah blah. This is the 
initialization of the function. So we can write this here, face action. So I want to detect a face. So what to say on this? This, this, this. Face. This button. Everything's fine. Image read file, so same thing, they want RGB. Let's take let me take another image. Search another image. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, let me search another image. All right. Okay, now I have another image put here. Obama, image of Obama. So the output should be here, the image. Okay. So I'm going to rename this Obama. So same thing. CV2, import the image. CV2 in read R, raw, Obama, with Obama? Obama, Obama, Obama. X, change it to deep RGB. CVT color, image, CV2, CVT color, RGB. Okay. So, what's next? Results equals to face detection dot process. Okay. Result result equals to face detection of process of image. Fine. So we want to see what's the result. Print out result here. Let's see results is a media pipe class. Which is uh, not very helpful. So let's go to declaration. Return. Let us return. Super. Yes. Detection. Return a name tuple object with a detection field that contains a list of the detect detected face location data. So I presume this one can write detection. Detection. All right, score is the confidence level, location data. So we want to extract this, right? We want to extract the, the box of the Obama's face. Where's Obama again? Obama. This is Obama. So this is the box. I cannot draw. Wait, I just open. Let me open up pane. Copy this, this, this. All right, okay. Obama here. This is the full picture. Now the model will return us a box, right? A box. Say so this is the box. And then there's uh, two coordinates. One yeah, small. Size, bigger piece. Two coordinates. One is here. One is here. This is X minimum. Y minimum. This is a... Uh, Y and X minimum, sorry. X maximum and Y maximum. So these four coordinates define a box, right? Okay. So we need to extract it to, you know, crop the face out of the, the picture. Okay, now this is a bit hideous. Location data. So I assume you can write in what location data face face it's up. Mm, nope can I use so is it a list uh, this is a generic of uh, input nope 
not the list, not the dictionary. What is it? Oh, oh, I remember. This is this, is it? Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yes. And again, actions. I've got the first. This is uh, first detection. So if you've got one, that there's two people. So for now, there's zero people. I mean, there's one people, which is Obama. So the one will be zero. Okay, now we need to extract the X min, Y min, and the width of the image. So now that we are in a. So I think now we can write in location. Here. There we go. Location data. What's the next one? We want relative bounding box. So relative bounding box. Yep. There we go. So I think so. Now we just need x min and min and y min return them. Yep. All right. So now let's create a uh list of the list in binding max by max right is equals to a list of results in binding I mean X max and Y max. Okay. Uh, sure, you got it correct. Compared to this. Oh, something's wrong. Oh, it's not. Max and uh, it's not max, they're given with so with is just x min plus with, right? So this one with plus this one, this one plus. Right. So this should be fine. Oh, y max or oh, or change y min. All right, one three five point one. This is this plus this. This is this plus this. All right, things fine. So for now, we, this is our first user. So if you want multiple users, just for i in results, i in length. I in range of length of so this is I and we should be good. Okay. Oh sorry, this is action. Right. Okay, now let's find a picture with multiple people's image. Uh, okay. We have another image, Obama and his family. Uh, I just search Obama. So it's not like I have a collection of Obama's picture, something. Hey, okay. oh, sorry. Let me find the image. Oh, oh, okay. This save image. Okay, now we have Obama family. This one, yeah, this one. So we have four faces, right? 
it should return us four faces. Okay. This one, copy, name, and we should reload it. And it should return us four, it, let's not print this. And four coordinates for the X min and the uh, Y min and the X min. Oh, this one need to change to I right, because for the corresponding person. Now it's uh, just Obama. Now it should for different values. Yep, there we go. So now we want to draw boxes on these four faces here. So we can do that by image equals to CV2 rectangle. So first pass image as well. But as said earlier, this is this is x min y min f x min y min in. Oh, no, actually, this is the i in. Let me write one. So now we have a list of these four add together. In cross for together, this four in a list. Okay, whereas previously it's inside the for loop, we didn't bring it up, so now we need to save it up so we can draw the rectangle. So for i in cross, so for each coordinate, we're gonna draw a rectangle. So i is coordinate. X mean equals to i first, right? I first. And y mean equals to i second. Mm -hmm. uh, second is one. Right, so this one reference. So we have image equals to, this one is image, right? Image equals to cv2 rectangle image. Two coordinates x min and y min, so it's just y zero, uh, i one. And the second part is uh, x max and uh, y max, which is uh, same thing. This, but this is two, this is three. All right, so what else they need? Color, thickness, line type, and shape. Right, color is in uh, RGB or BGR depending on um, what mode are you in right now. So this is uh, this is RGB or BGR. RGB, so RGB. This is green. So we're gonna draw boxes of green color. What's next again? Uh? thickness, thickness. One. Line type. CV two line. Any options? And there you go. Should be fine. So now, should be fine. Just save this image so we can view it later. So, uh, CV2 in right name of the image Obama with Obama. Now with boxes, ng image. Long time. Oh, I see. Okay, because uh, this eye is in uh, float just now. All right. So let's just change the value from float to. Oh, actually no. This is in uh, uh, decimal places, right? But our screen is in. Uh, we need to reside resize it according to the picture of the other uh, picture lah. Just now. so sorry uh, i forgot this part okay so, height goes to image shape height is one mm -hmm. the screen image shape Height. 
you know what? Let's just resize the image so that we can uh, zoom to resize the image to now our thing here is in that's more right we need to change it to integer so let me change it to i let me change it to a numpy array first that we can times all the way together okay empty. Okay. Right. i right here for numpy we can put in a type in uh, it's I can be undefined. Oh, you find right? Oh, the okay. Oh, this right. Obama with boxes. Oh, I haven't times the thing sorry right. times the size is a square so 500 normally the times by the x mean the times by the width the height into times by the height so now it's 500 this is a square so 500 500 i equals i as type in and change the integer because this function accepts integers and we should be fine. All right, let's look at Obama for me. In this yes. Obama with boxes. Right. Oh, Obama is in blue color, so let me change that. Color image two, CV two, GR two. Obama should be at the normal Obama box. Boxes around the faces. Okay, now we can draw a rectangle, right? Now we don't need rectangle anymore. Now we want to crop the faces out. Okay, actually, let's keep this. Just out for I. Same thing. Just now we draw right. So same thing. Copy. So instead of a uh, rectangle, we're gonna crop the faces out and uh, save the images. I think I'll just save one one of the images instead of all of them. So images. I this is x min y min and x max y max have images equals images. This is a crop function. I this is a y, I think. It's y min, y max, and x min, x max. Uh, let me take a look at my notes. Um, yeah. The y min first. It's reference. Mm -hmm. Image y min is what y min is one, one, two, one. Y max is what y max is one, three, right? Fourth value x min is x zero, x is x one, two, right? Now it should give us last image. And crop out. Okay. Wait, actually, something is wrong. Uh, just, um, something with this crop function. Hmm. 
Yeah. Something is wrong. Um. Sorry. Okay. Zero. Two. Three. One, three, one, two, zero, two. Um, what's wrong, huh? With this in Ah, this here. This error means that um, for this image here, this image is uh, undefined. Something is wrong with the function. Something is wrong with the image. Um. Okay. Oh. Let's try this. This, this value image on my That's no problem. Uh, Obama with boxes. Okay, this is the the, the last one. So I don't know why this is not working. wrong but I have no idea what right let's move on oh it right huh oh This one works, but just now the for loop doesn't work. Huh. Okay, never mind. So I'll move on. Uh, Nine thirty now. Half an hour. Okay, so let's do something new. We now gonna do on webcam. Drop face. Right. So sometimes I'm just gonna write. Numpy is numpy and uh, can equals CV2 video is a frame to a and we is this out so Is it this function? Is it 
And now we need to import this now the media pipe. So this bit to the right, so we can copy our code just now. And uh, media pipe uh, initialization of the model. And this is model. Change it to frame, change it to VGR. Right, so right. What's next? We want to get the output of the media pipe. Oh, I see there's a maybe the second parameter of the function. This one just now the for ah, it's all right. We we run out of time already, so uh, let's just move on. Results. In oh, this space is not callable. Oh, process. Okay, so if. Results action. So if there's a face, lah. If there's a face, then we will get the coordinates here. Try this. Print. This is our anonymous print. Let's say we. Uh, let me try something like screen at the shape of the webcam. First, this, uh, this is the width. I mean, this is the height. This is the width. Okay. So this is width equals to four eighty. Before we times this with the wait, is this a, need to change it to a MP array before we can times the whole thing. Eight times eight. it's not a square anymore, so it times by the in times by the width. In height plus right this one okay. good with okay. ah mistake on slide uh height three that's what happened and this and this now uh, before we do this we make sure that it's in um in uh in type because when we want to cut it is in in type right and blah 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 right so if so for this if I in, in coordinates. This is oh, this is empty. So for the coordinates, we have a empty list. So we need to put in the the faces into this list, right? So we just need to crop it out and. Uh, a pen it a pen is like uh, you put it into this list so every time this coordinate uh, comes out which here it will pen coordinates will go into here and then so on and so forth and uh, the next one will go at behind and continue until there's no more 
uh, new colleagues. Uh, sorry uh, if uh, this is too hardcore. I mean, you can look it up, the different terms. So now we are doing, we're doing crop the faces. All right, uh, image equals crop. Post image. It's not how we crop. Crop my I one. So I one. I three. I I two. I zero. Zero. This is two. Image. This is frame. Up and. Faces. It's this crop pen, crop. Now we have the list of crop images. Now, just to show you guys, now we should have change it back to get back to VGR. R. R just now. E so now should have cropped. Oh, sorry. This is a debug. Scalar index of scalar. Ah, huh. uh, something wrong again. Oh, oh, this is a uh, sorry. Uh -huh. <laughs> One second. I am calling it. Oh, this is this part. Oh. Oh. Some output came out. Uh, okay. Uh, my, this was wrong. Looks like I did it wrong. Like this. Times it, okay. Times it by width, height, width. Find this, the bucket. Find now, see. All right, so now like this. this is my face. So, oh shit. So, uh, I didn't do error exceptions now, so. When I make when my face move out of the camera and make the error, never mind. So this is my face. I move around, the crop will follow my face. Why is this? Huh? Empty. Keep it. So now we import our model. Import tensorflow stf model equals to models load model and load our model, which is try the first copy R case. Now this is our crop basis, right? This is our we're gonna put our model here because faces is here. So we just say if length of faces is not zero. Right, so if there's no face, you will just skip it. Let's say result equals to model of faces. This one is already in uh, 
uh, batch size equals to one or two, depending on how many faces there is. All right, so model faces. And uh, just now, let's copy this. Right, in result. Classes copy. E good to go. So now we have cropped our faces and oh, oh, one thing we forgot to do is to, after we crop our faces, we need to resize the face to uh, 224 by 224 because that's the input shape of the model. So if we continue just now, it will give us an input shape error. Uh, crop equals CV2 resize. Prop, prop, for and this is in the RGB. All right, should be good. All right, let's go try it out. So we'll load out the TensorFlow module. Oh, error is this? Oh, what can we do? Now is in uh, batch size equal to one thing should be. Yep, not wearing. See, I'm not wearing a mask. Let me take my mask. Got mask. Mask. Wearing. I'm wearing a mask. So if my nose come out, it will say I'm wearing wrongly. So this model is uh, quite great. Let's try a different color of a uh, mask. So it's a white color. This one, all right. Some of the angle is not accurate. All right. But most of the people coming in with the camera should be looking straight at the camera, right? So no big deal. Okay. Blue color. This is dark. Dark color mask. The one thing is the the face of the shape seems like it's too close. Face. I'm larger. So the the shape of the face will be ten percent larger because times right. Good. So this is minimum. Minimum need to be less. Maximum need to be more. So that the box need to be larger. And that's an error. What's wrong now? Uh, size empty. Oh, I guess my face is not in the frame. All right. Okay. There we go. See, my face is now larger a bit. If I do like this, this is wearing. This is wearing wrongly. This they can actually see the mask. Okay. All right. We. This one crop. On one one. We want a full frame. And, uh, we want to draw a rectangle. How we draw a rectangle? I delete the rectangle. Yep. Nope. I didn't delete. All right. For I in cores. For I in cores. Okay. Same thing. So let's copy this. Change image to frame, and it should draw a rectangle now. All right, see, there's a rectangle on my top. Oh. I want to flip. The... Ah, this arrow is ah, very. Assertion error of size empty in CV2 resize.
All right. Uh, okay. So next thing to do is to draw the output on the frame. All right. So in, let's say here another if if string print this and length of string to print is not zero uh And now we can say that if it goes through here, it will not be false anymore. So if it's true, actually I cannot pin it's true. Right, let's put none. This not none, right? So now we need to put some text on the frame. So this frame equals CV2, put text. Frame as in what you want to put into frame. Now the text is string to print, which is a, it's not in the list yet. All right, we just put it into a list in case there is a uh, more than one person in the frame. String prints, append, string to print. What's wrong with this statement? Is not none. Need this, just this, and this is S. So I in string prints. This I. This is a print something. Okay. So for every person in the frame, right, we will print out the. Okay. We will print out the the the, the output lock of the model, and then we need the coordinates also to put the. All right, we have here I. All right, so we need the we need something to relate to this course here. So we just put in I dot. Enumerate. So when it prints out, it will print out like uh, something like this. Lot. So one, I mean zero. And then string to print one is this. And the second one will be like this. Right? Get it right? So instead of uh, just printing this, 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 it will add in a this, zero, one, two. So we can relate two with our coordinates above so that we know where we can put our our text back. so text to put is string to print all right we know what they want here so i just put version text this is all all is where you want to put it so put it at uh eight. put it at uh, Obama, let's put it at here, right? This is uh this is X min and uh, Y max, right? But you don't want it to be on the box, so you need to put it down. So Y max plus about ten, like that, all right? So this is our our coordinate. So how is it again? X min. X min is I one, right? Cos of the first. Which is this one call it correlate to the face. This is the this this is now the four coordinates of the first face. So we want the X min, so we just say the first one, right? So same thing. We want to find the Y max, which is the last one. Last one is three plus n. So we down a bit. 
And then food text, what does it need? Font face. Uh, actually, I don't know. Font, just give two dot font. Eh? Font. All right, so many font. Let's just pick one. One. What's next? Font skip font. Just put one. Color, let's put uh, green. Again. And then continue this font here. Right, what's next? Color thickness is uh, let's put one line type. Let's put three two line. Let's choose one line A A. And uh, in height, uh, this one we don't need to consider. All right. So now the frame should have the strings print at uh, this part here. If there's no bug, hopefully if there's no bug. Ah, but the word is too big. Let me change it up. Okay. Oh, there's no bug. Oh, all right. This must be a integer. This one can change. All right. See, not wearing. Oh, it's too small. All right, all should be all fine. Too big, too small. All right, not wearing. This is past fifteen now. If you want, if you guys want to do so, let me wear a mask. Wrongly. Let me search some pictures. Obama again, I guess. Obama, same picture. Right. I got a picture of Obama here. He should be not wearing a mask. Yeah, not wearing. If I wear a mask, I should be wearing. Yep, I'm wearing. Obama is not wearing. Okay. Okay, so uh, remember when we did. Um, fine tuning right and previously we did another one with our self build model so you can see this 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 thing here sorry so this is our self build model the size is only 32000 kilobytes while the resnet is 200000 right and the parameters is about um one is 104 million, I think. One another one is uh, 25 million. So if I run the one that we built just now, let's run it. Even though the accuracy is not that it's not that uh good, right? But the speed, the speed see is much smoother as compared to the the ResNet model just now. ResNet model just now. Uh, not very actually not very uh, where? Oh very Oh, very long way. I mean, this model is not that bad. Hmm. Right. Okay, so uh, let's say that these two models have the same results, right? But then one model runs like, runs like this, and another model runs like very smooth. So if you are a client of the, of the, of the project right normally you want the fastest one with the see this one this one got a bit of starter to it and normally you want the fastest one so the thing you can do is to you can try to build your own model first if if after many times that it didn't succeed success like it's still the accuracy is quite low then you can move on to the transfer learning or you can just go ahead to transfer learning and then you just load in a gpu or uh you know some other model optimizer like open vino or onyx then you can run the the model faster because the h5 file and the tensorflow actually they save a lot of like redundant things as in the the the, the 
uh, how do I say that? Like the model model optimizer will like delete a lot a lot of like unused thing to make the model run faster. Right. So example one more minute. Let, let me open an example. Okay, this is an example that I did. Let's go motion, motion recognition. This one is running also running on a uh, ResNet 50 V2, but it's uh, transformed into uh, open Vino model. So the, uh, this is, uh, even though the model weight and the parameters is the same, it runs more smoothly considerably more smoothly than the, the one that we ran on the, the TensorFlow. So uh, next time, if you guys want to run the model, like you 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 ask yourself why why your CPU so bad, cannot run so good. So next time you can just change it to use a model optimizer. Uh, look it up to uh, improve your frame rate and such. Okay, 10 p.m. right on time. Any questions? And uh, if you guys want to try it out, there's a code that I did here, which is a little bit different here uh, in the resize part so that you don't lose some uh, data in the resize, right? It's almost the same. Uh, this is missing. So it's in uh, GitHub. So if you guys want to try it out for yourself, you can go ahead. And uh, the same thing, all right. This is the same thing I did just now. The here is different, all right? Uh, all right, same thing, but this one is on top. Uh. So if you want to change the bottom, go ahead and change it. I got no bug, but just now I think I forgot to intend one of the uh, function. All right, uh, any questions? You can go to this GitHub and uh, just clone this directory and download the model if you guys want to try it out for yourself. Any questions? No questions. All right. So I guess that's it. I hope you guys uh, learned something today. On the recording for today. <laughs> yeah, Lesin will provide the uh, recording later so yeah so if you guys have any uh like uh, for example if you don't know what thing read is you can just you know google it out and uh, mostly it's read from the uh, the, 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 the the documentation this is not documentation there's a documentation somewhere somewhere the documentation and or you can read it out here. Go to declaration. It will tell you what input you need to get and uh, what output it will come out from somewhere there. Yeah. All right, that's all for today. Uh, hope you guys have. Uh, I hope I have sparked your interest in. Uh, uh, what is this again? Image classification uh, we did today. All right. That's all for me today. Have a good night, everybody. Bye-bye.